Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, I'd like to continue on our discussion and journey through the Criterion Collection set, which was made and released earlier this year in 2020, and is this, the complete films of Agnes Varda, a great Blu-ray set. And the 13th Blu-ray disc in such set is right here, and it is given the title Visual Artist. Program 13, the 13th disc in this great Blu-ray set, The Complete Films of Agnes Varda. The works that are collected here for such Program 13 disc are Faces, Places from 2017, Visage, Village, which is co-directed by J.R. or J.R. And from 1964, we have Salut les Cubains. And then from 1982, Ulysse, and from 2004, Idessa, Les Ours, et etc. So we have four works, one a feature-length work, and the remaining three uh, shorter works, uh, ranging from 20 minutes to approximately 40 minutes. So we have a really fascinating and interesting gathering of works here, again, given the title Visual Artist for this per particular disc. And the title Visual Artist is very apt because in a lot of ways, this particular set of films deals with the aspect of Varda's career, which is dealing with or focusing on a fascination and, uh, and a mode of appreciation and expression through the visual medium of photography and also art exhibitions and the like. As we know, Varda is a filmmaker par excellence. She is also a cinematic philosopher. She's also an artist who is interested in trying to explore various media of artistic expression, including photography, including art uh, uh, displays, and also installations and other modes of expression. So this gathering or collection of films is a gathering of works that each in its own way focuses in on such interest or appreciation or uh, uh, expression or exploration of these sorts of modes of artistic expression. So the first film that is part of this collection is the 2017 film Faces, Places, again, co-directed by J.R.J.R. And this is a road movie of sorts that combines these two very interesting figures, artistic voices, and we see them on a journey where they want to, in essence, talk to many people, get their experiences, and interact with the environment and structures that they identify and discover along the way. And in their own unique ways, they attempt to integrate art into the structures and environment in a way that is personal, that is intimate, that is reflective of the people that tell the stories behind such works of art or expressions of art. And so through this exploration, we have, as with every other work by Varda, a multi-dimensional uh, work of uh, many levels. So the first level is the notion of visiting places, various places, in a road movie type of, of organization. And we've seen Varda visit so many places. We've seen this in narrative works or more documentary-like works. And so this is 
another great example of that. And it allows for Varda and JR to explore the environment, to get to know the people, to listen to the people's stories, to uh, have them interact with the photography or the pictures or the depictions that end up being the the artistic expressions that we then see perhaps uh, uh, shown on various walls or outdoor structures or stones or things of that nature. Size is also uh, changed in order to create this landscape mural type of artwork. And this therefore allows, as I say, an exploration of the people and the places in which these people inhabit. Places and people, people and place. This is a very integral theme in Varda's filmography and it is explored here with great vigor and interest by the filmmakers concerned. Also, we have a focus in on the environment and specifically the way that art is integrated into the environment. I think we saw this most vividly. Uh, we see this in many of uh, Varda's past works and perhaps most vividly and most strikingly in a fi uh, film like Mur Mur. And so we have a similar type of dialogue, shall we say, between the artist creators and the people that inspired such works and the physical space, the environment that surrounds them. And the way, therefore, that the artists look at the spaces as well as look at the art is in and of itself very fascinating. And it really goes to show that in many senses of the phrase, uh, there are many stories behind a particular place. And so I think that is very clear in past Varda works and it is certainly clear in the exploration that is had here, faces, places. The other aspect too is that this gives Varda and JR the opportunity to use this medium of this uh, cinematic work to create a story of them learning uh, and getting to know each other and really forging a very intimate bond between artists and between friends as they are traveling and as they are going through this journey. And so it gives us the opportunity as viewers to experience their bond, their friendship as it grows over the course of this particular work. And we understand too that, uh, that it could be said also to be a, a means by which they are interacting with us, us, the viewers as well, because there are a lot of situations that are set up. Uh, there are situations that uh, uh, have, is, and I mean this very positively, have the sense of construction while being juxtaposed with other parts of the film where these filmmakers and these artists are talking in almost a documentary style either with each other or with the people that they encounter along the way. So there is this nice way in which this film seems to be structured in a multi-dimensional fashion. Uh, it is a documentary type of road movie, but it is also a buddy film when we get to see these two people in essence get to know each other and bond. And they really do bond in a genuinely affectionate way. It's really lovely to see. And also it provides this opportunity for, for example, Agnes Varda to again employ the cinema of self-reflexivity to point the camera at her and to really identify and to show us aspects of her life. Uh, she does not shy away from her own age and the passage of years. Uh, this is after all 2017 and so she does not shy away from these topics. In fact when they tend to come up uh, maybe uh, uh, innocently or accidentally by JR or other people that are involved, she really takes advantage and uses it as an opportunity to have a discussion point about this idea of of Varda and uh, her, her, where she finds herself in, uh, in this particular point in time in her life. And speaking of which, there are moments too where we get some genuine tenderness and emotion and some sorrow and sadness along the way. Uh, this is a, also a road movie that is an external journey, but also an internal journey of sorts. And it provides Varda and JR the opportunity to learn about each other, not only in the context of this particular uh, artistic endeavor that they both are engaged in, uh, that is the topic of the film, but also an internal one where they get to learn about each other. There is this lovely 
conceit about glasses and how this is reminiscent of another filmmaker from Varda's past that Varda uh, knew and worked with and was uh, associated with. And there, therein lies, a, uh, and I'm speaking about Jean-Luc Godard, and therein lies a very, uh, a very important component uh, and how Jean-Luc Godard figures into the story that is Faces Places. I think this is an example of how the film is able, therefore, to turn inward as well and become an example or a stage in the inward journey of Agnes Varda as she deals with things of her cinematic past, also the associations that she had in her past, including Jacques Demy, and also those very important bonds that she had in her past. And she's using in the moment of now in order to reach some kind of conclusion or resolution to the extent that she's able to about those things in the past so then she can look out into the present and the future. And uh, JR is there as her guide and her companion. And again, it's a further indication of the tender loveliness that is their relationship as it grows and develops over time throughout the film. And of course, along the way too, we get those signature moments that uh, are uh, pure Varda, and we know this by now, of course. We get the symbolism of beaches, or not just symbolism, we get the beauty and vigor and landscape that is the beach image. We also get images of photography and certain subjects and the way that the subjects are aligned that is, as, as I say, very much akin to work like Murmur, but it's also very much linked to other works that, for example, we will see later in the Visual Artist Program 13 disc. And so this is all to say that this film also provides the opportunity for the filmmakers to engage in a cinematic, visual, photo uh, photographic-based type of poetry, as well as engaging in inward journeys, as well as engaging in outward journeys, as well as engaging in a kind of documentary exploration of the landscape and people and how art is able to guide us throughout all of these aspects and all of these avenues. This is an utterly sublime work of art and it's wonderful to have it here included like this. This is Faces, Places. And when we speak about Faces, Places and this disc, uh, let us now focus in on the supplements that can be found accompanying Faces, Places. Uh, the first one is a, a uh, an interview with J.R. and Agnes Varda in English, and this is, was conducted by Cohen Media in 2018. It's called Chance is the Best Assistant. It's approximately 46 minutes. It's really lovely. Um, the title given to this particular supplement is, of course, borrowed from a line that Agnes Varda says in this particular film and it's really indicative and emblematic of the type of filmmaker philosophy that she espouses the idea of finding things in the moment and relying on chance encounters and uh, good fortune in order to create the wonders that she's able to capture uh, in her works and so this idea of a of a kind of randomness if you will uh, guiding the way, which is uh, a, a lovely uh, conceit and notion. And in this particular uh, conversation, uh, it's great to hear them talk about how they met, what the circumstances therefore were of this project coming into being, and what it was they were approaching, and how they approached specific people that they met, what were the stories behind those particular encounters, and uh, were there any other secrets uh, that could be shared and and the like and so and also how some of these people might have or might not have reacted uh, after the film was released and so uh, this is a, overall a highly informative very very interesting uh, interview uh, with the two filmmakers again this is approximately 46 minutes and then the next one is uh, called The Beach Cabin. And this is an outtake, approximately four minutes. And uh, it's interesting because this is an outtake uh, uh, in, of the film. And uh, this is also featuring a conversation between uh, the two filmmakers. And it's, uh, it's 
related to uh, another work that we will find in visual artists. So that also lays the groundwork for yet further connections between Faces Places and uh, some of uh, Varda's earlier works. So another very insightful, interesting uh, supplement to have, again, the beach cabin. And then we have a visit from Mathieu Chedi, uh, again, a program from 2017, and this is approximately three minutes. Uh, and uh, this is uh, featuring Varda, JR, and Mathieu, Ch Mathieu Chedi, whose music uh, accompanies the work. It's a really great and uh, it's a great score full of character and life and uh, and it has that sense of the lived-in experience uh, to it and it's a, a wonderful poetic motif that accompanies us along the way. So this is a nice uh, a visit uh, by uh, from Mathieu Chedi. And then we have the trailer uh, for Faces Places. Next in the lineup of this Program 13 visual artist is the film from 1964 called Salut les Cubains. And this is a, uh, another uh, essential, interesting work from Agnes Varda. As we saw in the earlier work in the visual artist lineup of films, uh, there is this focus, uh, or one aspect of Varda's artistic focus, being in art and in photography. And this aspect of her focus in on photography is at uh, the center of Salut les Cubains, because this work is, in essence, an edited montage of her photographs that were taken uh, in Cuba in the early 1960s and assembled here uh, in this way uh, to not just express the exhibition of these photographs and covering these, uh, this exhibition of these photographs, but also featuring the photographs themselves. And so they are still photographs but they are edited in a way to give the subjects of the photographs, again, in Cuba, the people in Cuba and the way that uh, they live their life there. And uh, um, there's a sense of, of, of uh, humanity and emotion and passion and also uh, energy and vigor and culture and music and life as well as politics that's expressed here and political figures and the like. Fidel Castro uh, comes as, the, as, I think, the most obvious example of this. Uh, but this is, uh, really, uh, this is really fascinating because this is showing us the operation of photography in action, in cinematic form. Uh, again, these are still photographs set against a kind of montage uh, way in cinema to give them a sense of movement and life, which is a really interesting paradoxical juxtapos juxtaposition because it's a still photograph, but a photograph captures the essence of, of so much that is at the heart of that photograph. So there's life there, but it's also a moment, which in many ways is uh, very much the opposite of what we see in cinema because cinema is indeed focusing in I think in principle anyway, on the concept of movement because it's a succession of many different shots that are, are projected at such a rate so as to create the illusion of movement of some kind of image as projected on a screen or whatever. So uh, that kind of juxtaposition I think is, is very, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's brilliantly paradoxical. And in the hands of Varda, I think it comes out very, uh, very profoundly. Uh, because she is at once showing us the brilliance of capturing the moment of a photograph while at the same time showing us the life that exists when we have the juxtaposition of photographs at a certain speed to suggest the illusion of movement. And so in both ways, she is showing us the life of the essence of the particular subject matter of the photograph. And this, I think, is at the heart of what her fascination is with photography and cinema and how it's intertwined and how it, uh, it combines and clashes. And even in those clashes, we still get the sense of what is the essence of what it is we are looking at. So uh, I, what a brilliant work this film is uh, in the way that it is projecting or uh, exemplifying this, uh, I think, very nuanced and complex way 
to express uh, art in different modes. So this is one thing that's very important. And of course, it, it provides a nice link to faces places too in terms of the use and reliance on the image and photography. So that's one aspect of this that's fascinating. Another aspect is, of course, the subject matter itself. And so uh, the focus in on uh, Cuba in the 1960s when these photographs were taking place is, of course, of a very important and uh, a, a very eventful time in the history of Cuba. It is also focusing in, though, on the people. It focuses in on the political aspect, but what's interesting is the order in which the, the subject matters are presented because it's, it really focuses in on the people and the place and the atmosphere and the faces of the citizens. And, the, and as I say, it's an, another example of Varda's fascination with people and place and place and people. And you can tell there is a real love and sincerity in the photographic eye that is shooting these shots. And then it's an interesting turn into more political discussions of political figures and photographs that were taken there. And that leads into a general discussion of a kind of political trajectory history, uh, which is always focused on the individual and the human aspect. So uh, this is a very interesting way in which subject matter is ordered in this particular film. It's almost as though the underlying message of this is the ultimate human, uh, the, the human factor when it comes to everything that Varda is shooting, uh, which leads, I think, quite naturally and quite organically into uh, a, a, a nuanced political discussion. So I find this order and presentation of materials and also the focus in on the human element, the humanist element, to be, uh, I think, very much in keeping with the cinema of Varda that we have explored thus far in this set. Um, and we also have this idea of photography and the, the act of the uh, presenting photography and the exhibition, because we get this thing about not just experiencing the photographs, but also getting a, a, a meta discussion of the exhibition of the photographs themselves. And that leads into these uh, wonderful parallel discussions about not just how photographs affect us, but how we as humans act in this in this environment of an exhibition and how Varda's camera then captures those moments that are ultimately very human and very tender. So uh, we have so many levels, right? Not just the subject matter, not just the act of photography, but also exhibition and installation and art uh, in and of itself. So uh, again, very crucial and very essential in the world of Varda cinema. So this is Salut les Cubains. And the supplement that's included here is a, another great introduction from uh, Agnes Varda. And this is from 2007. It's brief, it's less than two minutes, but it is really, uh, really essential. So uh, uh, Check that out if you can, as well as all the other introductions by Varda that are found in this set. And then we have another short work. Uh, this is from 1982, which is called Ulysse. Uh, there's one moment where uh, in one of the supplements for Faces Places, Agnes Varda is also quoted to say the film in English as Ulysse, but uh, in French she says it as Ulysse, and so this is the uh, uh, the the utterly uh, uh, profound work that is focusing in on a particular photograph, and this particular photograph has in it various elements that each has its own story and background at the time, and also in the moment, in the now. And so this is a, a story of a journey of trying to find the people that are, are part of this particular fascinating and very, uh, very uh, mysterious photograph. And so this is, uh, uh, this is just uh, another great example of Varda's fascination with the medium of photography and how one image tells so much, not just one deep story, but many 
deep stories that then go into many other deep stories that then in turn or simultaneously also provide some indications of human behavior both on the macro level and the micro level such that we get these gestures and feelings and nuances of human characters as well as getting these uh, statements about uh, youth and age and life and death and everything that surrounds the not just the everyday and mundane but the profound and fundamental that is the human experience and it's all wrapped in this one photo and the, it's not just that it's also the way that Varda goes about exploring the photo trying to find the people that were there and see how, what uh, time has done with them what the passage of years has done with them what they are doing now etc and what she and ex explanations by her about what she found fascinating about the subjects that were captured in the photo as well uh, there's a particular focus on an animal so it leads into a discussion about animals and animal behavior and the like uh, which is also an interesting trait of Varda's cin uh, of cinema She's also interested in the quirky, lovable, charming details of reactions, not just by human beings, but by all living things, including animals. So uh, this is all here. And again, it's uh, all focused in on one photograph. So it's amazing to think how one image can take us so far and really traverse landscapes of both motion and time and human experience. This is amazing. So this is Ulysse from 1982. And as for the supplements that are found in this, uh, with this particular work, so we have um, uh, the introduction from 2007, again from Agnes Varda. Uh, very brief, uh, about a minute and 30 seconds, but well worth it. These introductions are all worth it. And this one is another great one to listen to. Then we have a, a supplement which is Une Minute pour une image. And this is a uh, program from French television from 1983. And the, the concept of the program was that uh, there would be a, a still image uh, that would be by a photographer or artist that would then be commented upon uh, for the duration of a particular minute by a, a third-party observer. So in this program, it is Agnes Varda who acts as the observer commenting upon various photographs of various photographers uh, and just getting her impressions. And again, we have the sequence of, of this sorts of discussions on photography from Varda, uh, each uh, about a minute, thus the title, Une Minute Pour Une Image. And this is a, uh, this collection, uh, according to the information found in the supplemental section, is indicated as being uh, from this curated section, again, based in the program from 1983, and then uh, regathered for purposes of 2007 into this supplement, again, presented here, uh, 26 minutes. So uh, that's according to the information found in the, in the supplemental menu. But in any event, this is another great example of how Varda is treating the image, the photographic image, and how one image can tell so much, not just from the point of view of the, the person taking the image, but also from the point of view of that who or that person who is experiencing the image uh, as the, the viewer. Uh, so this is, again, uh, uh, the way in which photography unites the artist and the viewer. Uh, and we see that united front or that concept, that communication uh, presented and exemplified in how Varda is speaking about these images. This is great. This is really great stuff. So again, approximately 26 minutes. And then we have the next work that is included in this program 13, which is called Idessa, Les Ours, et, etc. And this is from 2004, approximately 42 minutes. This is a documentary 
that is focusing in on Edessa Endeless and a show uh, of uh, photographs and in fact it's an entire exhibition uh, that's focusing in on the bear or the teddy bear and we have photographs of people and their interactions holding teddy bears uh, and this show is taking place in Munich Germany so in Munich and this is uh, a really uh, it, it's it's seems to be at the start a very uh, a very charming and innocent almost representation or portrait if you will of this a very uh, interesting artist and photographer and collector uh, and a fascinating figure that is Idessa uh, Endeles. So uh, it seems on the one hand that Varda is making this kind of, of portrait as she has done uh, with many other personages in the past. So that's one way to view the, the work. But then what happens is along the way we come to realize and understand that there is in fact a wholly different dimension by which this particular uh, uh, exhibition of art and photography uh, that's uh, being arranged here is in fact uh, 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 founded upon such that when we realize what the ultimate uh, philosophy is behind this particular art exhibit, we understand that it's not just serving as a collection of photographs that's focusing in on the teddy bear and the aspect of, of collecting and how the teddy bear and the, the notion of childhood and childhood memory and memory and our lives is very important and it creates this unifying factor. It's not, it, it, well that is very significant and important in and of itself of course, but there comes a point where we realize that that is not the only objective and motivation behind this particular work or these per this particular uh, exhibition and we realize that the whole setup is in and of itself a kind of art exhibition and installation that people that come and visit this particular uh, of, uh, photographic exhibition are experiencing and it's almost like they don't realize they're experiencing it until they, re they reach a certain point and they realize my goodness this is actually speaking to a whole various uh, set of different historical points and emotional points as well as hitting some pretty hard truths about, about uh, uh, history. And when we realize that, we then realize in turn that the film also, the Agnes Varda work, is also operating like that. And we get a double turn, if you will, not just a turn in terms of how we understand the exhibition and art to be operating, but also we understand that Varda, her work itself, is operating on a similar type of basis in how she's introducing information here. So it is a brilliant, uh, uh, it is a brilliant uh, take, double take, meta take, if you will, on the exploration of this particular figure and she is an artist a photographer she is also a collector of things and she is also an appreciator of things and also a keen observer of history and so she is trying to present to us uh, this uh, concept of how to experience the history which is the stuff of the past but experience it in a way that is fresh and bold and very much in touch with our living experience now. This is, I think, uh, at this is the very essence of what I think Varda uh, identifies as being the effective use of art and photography and cinema to tell a story, to relay a message, and to convey ideas that really mean something. And this film, therefore, this work, therefore, I think, serves as a brilliant reminder in that oh so carefully balanced and nuanced and uh, caring way that Varda is always giving us. And it shows us this in this particular way. So I think this is another essential, essential work in the catalog of Agnes Varda. So this is Idessa Les Ours, et cetera. So, uh, and 
uh, with respect to the supplements, we have the introduction from Varda again from 2007. It's less than two minutes here, uh, so it's like all the introductions on the discs so far, they are brief, but also like all the introductions on the discs or the set, they are essential. This is an essential introduction, and uh, we understand uh, that there are many different motivations and meanings behind not just the subject matter, but also the way in which Varda approaches the subject matter. And I think this is the key. Uh, so, wow, wow. So, this is Idessa Les Ours et etc. from 2004. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now with respect to this Program 13 visual artist. And indeed, yes, this is a collection of works that is focusing in on the concept of the visual artist. The visual artist that could be Varda, it could be, uh, it could be someone other than Varda. In any event, it is the concept of uh, the art installation, photography, and cinema and how these are uh, used uh, to, in isolation or in combination to tell a story, to transmit ideas, and to hopefully illuminate and to show us something about who we are as human beings. So, This is Program 13, Visual Artist. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. Please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. I really appreciate it. Stay strong, stay safe, and cheers.